This piece right here is just fantastic. It is marked Made in Japan, and you could probably figure out the maker's mark, but it really doesn't matter. This is a piece that is going to sell on based on what it is, not who done it. Uh, anytime you find something figural and fantastic like this, it's going to be worth money. Okay, we are going to do something just a little bit different today. You often hear me say, to find out about this stuff and to know what's what, go into an antique mall and get your hands on it. So I'm gonna do a series of videos inside of an antique mall and I'm gonna focus on one type of item. So glass, pottery, kitsch. I don't even know what I'm gonna do yet. It's gonna depend on, you know, kind of what I see. But I am planning to definitely do glass, pottery, and mid-century, and then we're gonna see what other things we can find. I wanna tr show you also some true antiques. What does that mean? What's the collectability? We're gonna really just take a deep dive into this stuff, and hopefully you will find it out in the wild where you can pick it up and sell it for a profit. That's the goal. All right. Let's get inside. We are at the Charleston Antique Mall in Las Vegas. And uh, let's go see what the dealers have stocked their booths with. This is a whole shelf of Czechoslovakia pottery. And you can almost just tell without even looking that this is from Czechoslovakia. The colors and the styling. Let's look at this picture, which is really, really cute. There you go made in Czechoslovakia. It says burn on the bottom. Um, but yeah, you look for those colors. That one's $32 and you've got like a little little trinket here. This one is $16. Salt and pepper. Now that one's not marked. Well, it's marked, but it's really hard to read. But there's no doubt about it that that is Czechoslovakia. Same with these. You can just tell. Turn them over, and there's your mark. These are Merezic. Mer I think that's what that says. So, be on the lookout for this because it's a good seller. These are done by Treasure Craft. It's a pretty distinct look that they have to their pottery, and they did a lot of these souvenir pieces. I have to do this without knocking these off. This is a salt and pepper set. And you can see right there on the bottom, marked Treasure Craft, made in USA. They have kind of that fake wood looking kind of texture and, and glaze to them. That's pretty distinct for Treasure Craft. They have $10 on this set. That's a good price on that. And they have 38 on the big coffee pot cookie jar, which is a really cool piece. This is some true mid-century pottery right here. This is Santa Anita Ware. Let me show you the mark on the bottom. A lot of these companies like to do this faux wood grain into their ceramics. It was a California pottery company. This is the very popular leaf pattern. What's unusual about these pieces is you, you, you see a lot of green. You don't see a lot in the blue. And they want $10 each for these. And I think I'm going to pick them up because this is not something you find every day and it's very classic mid-century in a great color. This vase back here is pretty classic for Weller. Now, Roseville Weller have a lot of these same muted, almost pastel glazes, so you do have to kind of know the difference and they're heavy pottery. But there is the Weller mark on the bottom there. Sorry, it's upside down. I can't really adjust one-handed. It's a heavy piece. And this used to do much better than it does now. It's still really good pottery. Let's see what they're asking on this one. Oops, 135. 
So you'll see up here in the corner what a piece like this goes for on eBay. This is a fantastic piece of Heidi Shoup pottery, 1940s. I mean, and you can just see it's, it's just got the look. The gold gilt was really popular then. Um, I believe this was made to be an ashtray. You can just barely, barely make out the, uh, the label on this. Even then, it's, I don't know if my camera's going to pick it up, but it's there. Let's see how much they are asking for it. They are asking $45. There you go. This is a pretty classic piece of Hager pottery, 1980s. They did a lot of these people, figurals, couples. Uh, it lost its value for quite some time, but seems to be on a very big comeback. I think Crazy Lamp Lady has something to do with that. I think she's brought the cool back into Hager pottery and brought a demand for it. Uh, it is cool. I had some of this back in the 90s. I had some of this in my bedroom. I must confess. There were several of these pottery companies, a lot of them from California, they're known as California Potteries, uh, that made a lot of this kind of pottery back in the 50s, 60s. And these console pieces like that with the candle holders were really popular. Everybody had a mantle. Uh, so. This is Rose Lane is the maker of this set here. And it's pretty cool to find a set like this all together with all the pieces. Weeping Gold is getting a little bit more popular than it used to be. It fits into a mid-century vibe and it also fits into a Hollywood Regency decor. Larger, more unusual pieces are the most desirable, but if you can pick it up at the right price, it does sell. And here in another booth, I found an entire tea set with the creamer, the sugar, and the teapot. Um, again, it's, it's made with real gold, so it's really got a gold look to it. And then it's got that kind of drippy effect. It's very, very distinguishable when you're out and about. And they're asking 85 for the set, which is a little optimistic. TV lamps are really hot right now. Um, there's different companies that make them. This one is made by Royal Fleet, which is not one of the higher end ones, but it's really all about the subject matter. That's what people are really looking at. Some of these can sell for hundreds of dollars. This is a beautiful piece of Nippon porcelain. I am including some porcelain in here. The Nippon era, things that were marked Nippon between 1891 and 1921. So you know if it says Nippon, that's when it was done. And then in 1921, they started marking them as Japan because Nippon stands for Japan. This is a Weller pottery piece. Weller came around in the late 1800s, but was really like in the early 1900s was the pottery maker. And they closed down in 1948. I don't think it gets the value that it deserves right now on eBay. And that is because eBay is suggesting all these lower prices. So don't fall prey to that. Let's keep this awesome pottery up where it belongs in value. This is Hall. It's a little assortment of pictures here. I don't tend to be attracted to the Hall design, so I don't pick it up. It's a pretty good seller in the 20 to 30 price range for a picture like that. This is a nice little piece made by Pigeon Forge. Pigeon Forge uh, started in 1946 and they closed in the year 2000. So all of it is vintage now. And it's really high quality and really desirable. And this piece is not marked. And you just have to look at quality in that case. And this is a very nicely done piece with nice glaze and technique. And you can price based on quality. I don't even know what to say about this piece. I, I don't... I, I, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it was made for like a heart surgeon. 
I mean, it looks like a big heart. Uh, this is definitely not a piece that you want to try to ship. It was monstrously heavy. I'm trying to see here on the bottom if it is marked. And I see a mark, but I just can't make out who it is. It's like a studio. It's well done, very well done, but that would be a monster. This, um, actually both of these pieces are made by a California pottery. Um, that was like in eh, the 30s to the 60s was like the California pottery heyday. And sadly, in the 1960s is when the cheap imports started making their way in and many, many of these companies did not survive. So when you find a California pottery and there are many companies that, that make it and just sign it California or California something, they're all vintage, they're all. These are made by the Abingdon company and interesting history uh pre-1934 this is a company that made plumbing supplies and then during the depression they switched to these housewares and pottery and then post world war ii they went right back to their plumbing supplies so it's a pretty interesting company uh it's got that fairly classic 1950s heavy clay construction. The blue one is not marked as Abingdon, but it is. Um, and you can see how similar these are to one another. Then we have this interesting piece that is by the Nilawak. I think I'm saying that right. Um, they predominantly made what's called mission wear from 1911 to 1921, which is a really colorful pottery. Then in 1921 through about 1947, made that type of pottery. These are very, very classic Hager. Um, now these will do about $50 a piece on eBay because of the high shipping. But in person, you can sell these for $100 or so each. This is by Hull. Hull made all different things, and this is a set of nesting swans. You know, and a lot of this stuff you'll never figure out a maker on, so you gotta look at the glazes and just know that this is a 1950s, they're calling it Art Deco. I don't think I'd call this Art Deco. I think I would call this mid-century. There's the bottom. It's pretty cool. I think that yeah, might be a Royal Copley. I'm gonna put on this one. Remember, we got the outside wall too, Mom. There we go. Oh, I've already got two things over there that are going on. Uh oh. Okay, cool. Okay. <laughs> might want to take that off of there. <laughs> this is a piece by Maurice of California, one of the California pottery companies. And you'll notice a similarity to Treasure Craft. A lot of their items did look like Treasure Craft. So it's that look and it sells. So be on the lookout for that one as well. This is Robinson Rand's Bottom. They're a company out of Roseville, Ohio that stumps a lot of sellers when they see Roseville under there. And they were around from 1916 to 2005. Still out there, gotta be careful. This piece is not marked. And when you have a piece that's not marked, it's all about the look and the quality. This has a very familiar look to me as being one of the very, very good makers. So uh, they have this priced at $14 and I did pick it up and I'm still doing a little research on it, but it's just a spectacular piece in shape, in quality, in the painting. It's awesome stuff. This piece appears to be a Sasha Brastoff, which was around from 1947 to 1963. And Sasha himself signed pieces with his full name, but then his hundreds of artists used Sasha B. And then post 1962, a back stamp was added. This piece is something you'll find a lot of. It doesn't have a maker's mark on it. So some of the clues are in the way that the bottoms are formed, the quality of the piece, the clays used. This is another California pottery company, Monterey, and the classic colors and design of all this California pottery are pretty similar, so it all sells really well. This is Francoma. Francoma was started in 1933 and they changed the type of clay they used in 1953. So those earlier pieces are worth a ton more money. 
The company changed hands several times until it finally closed in 2010. This guy is just fun. He is made by Hickok and he's got his original label on there. So I just wanted to show you a lot of these companies used a foil label or a label of some kind versus actually marking the bottom of the piece. That's why it's important to learn the construction techniques in order to identify some of these old potteries. This is Desert Sands Pottery. It started in 1950 and was discontinued in 1975 made in the west coast mainly nevada and then some in california but very distinct this piece right here is just fantastic it is marked made in japan and you could probably figure out the maker's mark but it really doesn't matter this is a piece that is going to sell on based on what it is not who done it uh, anytime you find something figural and fantastic like this it's going to be worth money because people buy on emotion. This is by a company named Hyalin. Again, it is another one of those USA pottery, mid-century. They kind of all had a very similar look with their own little tiny discrepancies. This is another piece of Francoma, just to show you. They also made it in a brown, as well as that prairie green. And there are some other colors out there as well. This is the kind of dealer I absolutely love. They know what they have and they have it marked very accurately. This is Roseville and there, unfortunately, is a lot of reproduced Roseville out there. So if you're going to deal in Roseville, you really need to learn what is true Roseville because it does sell well if you've got the real thing. This is a faience piece and faience is simply the that tin glazed earthenware uh, which majolica falls under and usually they have some pretty good bottom stamps to recognize them and, and be able to research a little bit but being able to use faience that's a really bougie word you want to be able to use that if you have a piece here's another piece of sasha brastoff and this one is signed sasha b so you know that it was made by one of sasha b's one of a hundred or so really fine artists that he had doing the work for him. This is by a company named Rose Lane. They were around from 1938 to 1977. Of course, their heyday was 50s, 60s, mid-century, and they have the look. And here is, again, another uh, brassed off piece. Let's see how this one is signed. See this one? We're looking. Looking, looking, looking. There it is. Sasha B. Sasha B. This is a piece of salt glaze pottery. And salt glaze originated in Germany, but has become popular in some U.S.-based companies as well. It's usually done on some sort of uh, stoneware, or as we like to think of as crocs. Very desirable, because it was a very, very hard pottery to produce it is a hard pottery to produce they have like a 50 percent failure rate i just learned that it is actually made with the vapors of salt hence the name salt glaze uh, it's done in cobalt blue it's also done in like a rusty orange color as well see that one you can tell is german because it says hunderbilt for handmade this is stangle and I really don't understand why Stangle has lost its value. It's got an extremely rich history that goes back to some of the great pottery makers like Fulper. Uh, in 1940s is when they really had their heyday making the dishes and the dinnerware we see today. They did close the doors in 1978. So it's all very old stuff, but... It doesn't have a lot of value on eBay anymore, sadly. This is Shawnee, and Shawnee was around from 1937 to 1961, where when the import trade came in, they could not compete anymore, and they went out of business. There is some Shawnee pottery that does extremely well, like these very unusual pieces. Now, this is one of my favorite companies. I have a lot of... Uh, 
personal history with Moorcroft, it's one of the first things that I sold for, for big money on eBay. So I remember it very well. It also has a very rich history going back to 1898, uh, where it was called Florian Ware. It was called that until the 1913, when Moorcroft branched out of the company he was designing for and developed his own company. And you want to look for his signature only. That's the older stuff. I hope you've enjoyed this little bit closer look at pottery that you can find out in the wild. I really encourage you, if pottery is something that you want to specialize more in, really just go and get your hands on it. Look up the different companies, learn about their history. It's really quite fascinating. I love learning about some of these old makers and the history and the and the designers that came from one company and then started their own company and, and how the whole mid-century craze came about and, uh, and is very popular today, I might add. So uh, it's something to really do your research on. And I hope I've just given you a very, very small peek into what's available and possible out there. If you like this type of video, please be sure you give this one a thumbs up and leave me a comment to let me know what it is you liked, what you'd like to see more of. I do plan on doing more of these type of videos in the future and uh, you help me gear it more towards what you want to see. So with that, go be profitable and make it fun and we'll see you on the next one. Yeah.